I'd like to acknowledge uh, Rundry Country, thank Uncle Dave for the welcome. Um, I'd also like to speak in respect uh, in respectful acknowledgement of my ancestors, Gundijmara ancestors and my elders and my community and my country. I also acknowledge uh, Monica Morgan in the crowd today. Um, she's taught a lot of us the hard way but the deadly way. With the Royal Society of Victoria, when I moved home, I was born on country and uh, we went through a rough patch uh, as a community, so I had to come down to Melbourne for work when I was 18. Uh, by the time I was 30, it was all right to go back home again uh, because we had our native title claim. And we were also working on our, on our land, on our country, um, increasing our understanding of our country and how it works and our relationship with country. Um, we had a, a world heritage uh, application to get in um, to UNESCO. I remember UNESCO freaking out a bit because they've never had a, um, a traditional owner, a First Nations group, uh, submit an application with their own land for uh, world heritage before. Um, so we had to sort of make sure they were all right because, like I said, they freaked out a bit. But in getting that understanding of what what univer outstanding universal values that our country had along the Budgebim landscape, um, there was a lot of opinions. There was a lot of opinions, um, as you can imagine. Uh, to help us ground all those opinions into um, a reality, not only of our own Gundijmara reality, uh, but the reality of the broader community, we'd always go to the, uh, uh, the reports from the Royal Society of Victoria, uh, people like Bernie Joyce, this one and that one, to sort of ground all those opinions about our country into what we're going to put forward. So just to acknowledge uh, Bernie and all that. Um, what we need is more land in this solution as part of the solutions uh, and traditional owners to, um, to hold that land. Uh, we need more national parks, thank you and knowledge Matt here today, and uh, we need those parks to be returned to traditional owners. We need every, all that we can get, um, not only with um, the historical uh, impact that we've had from colonisation over the past 200 and something years, um, there's, there's, there's not a lot of land left um, in the public sphere uh, for us to look after. Um, people, it's always amazing when people talk about uh, Victoria and they talk about the national parks and managed reserves that we have have been remnant. And I think, oh, how, how can you sort of diminish it down that way? Because um, it is all that we have left. Um, it is still affected by, um, by modern life and the history that we've had over the past 200 years. It's still affected by climate change. Current planning. Uh, look, just to quickly go through cultural heritage in places, teaches about the environment, teaches about biodiversity, uh, water and flows, um, that's happening, although we sort of finally get some water allocated to traditional owners and that's when the water's drying up a bit. Or uh, massive cultural <coughs> entities uh, like the Murray River have been um, irrigated um, where it doesn't recognise the Murray River. It doesn't, you can't recognise it as the river um, anymore. The water's there, but the country's different and there's a lot more people draw, um, drawing on it. Cultural burning and fire recovery, and we are very lucky to have Uncle Dave here today. Um, he likes to burn things responsibly and culturally. <laughs> um, but it is, it is such a culture uh, with, with cultural burning. After the uh, Black, fire, uh, Black Summer uh, bushfires, uh, we got called up to Canberra. Um, I suppose it was all the places uh, that were registered for, with National or World Heritage. Um, the Minister, Suzanne Lee, with the co co oh, former minister now, uh, with the koalas that were up there, she pulled everyone together and it was really surprising walking into the room to see uh, cultural burning people in there as well. The fire sticks people from up, up that way. They were in the room and it was a shock, a surprise, a wonderful surprise to see them invited by the, in the room by the Australian government and also even deadlier was all those national world heritage places um, immediately gravitating towards those people. With the Black, Saturday, uh, Black Summer bushfires, um, we had the human loss, we had the biodiversity loss um, and places, we had rock art scorched off the stone. That's what we had. So that to respond to that, um, you've got to get through your own broken heart 
um, your own broken mind. And I think the way uh, Rob and Tony, Anthony pre um, presented what we've got to do, plus Dave's welcome, um, gives us a lot of spirit to do that. Uh, biodiversities and forests, marine and coast, cultural landscapes, traditional languages. And in Victoria, again, what we have today is so profound. We live in this state that colonised our country, that um, decimated our people, that took our language, but we have survived. And today in 2022, we have a First Peoples Assembly working towards a treaty for Victoria. Who could have thought, who could have imagined? It still freaks me out, because I still think they're going to come and round us up um, to, 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 to get rid of us. I still have that as a modern uh, Gundij Mara person with work in not only my own community, but communities right across the country. We have this truth telling happening, which is going to be so profound again. Um, this is the environment that we have in Victoria. This is the environment that gives us all um, that bravery to do something about biodiversity, to challenge the lost sets there. I wanted to talk about what our people do, our country plans across the state. Um, what isn't on here is the dozens and dozens of uh, co-management plans that go across the um, state that uh, traditional owners have worked out with, uh, with parks and with DELP, uh, who are very important partners and tools for what we need to do on biodiversity. Um, and also Uncle Arthur Isla, which is always deadly. Yes, um, we've done some good things. Um, that voice, that understanding, that perspective from our traditional owners are there, they're ready to engage. The most important thing is the voice of traditional owners for traditional country being engaged with your science. It's very important. If you don't have that authenticity, that relationship, it's not going to work. Um, my final thing, you've heard of Indigenous protected areas. Yep. Oh, well done. About a third of you. <laughs> we got some work to do. Indigenous protected areas are the best thing on earth, uh, in my opinion. The Indigenous estate makes up 20% of the Australian landmass. About 3% of, uh, of that is Indigenous protected areas. It's where Indigenous uh, uh, communities, whether it's uh, uh, land under their own title or, uh, or other public land, the mob sit down, they discuss it, they declare an Indigenous protected area that gets the Commonwealth going um, and uh, that the, how IPAs, Indigenous protected areas, are managed is um, um, under the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, those categories there. So not only is it the mob uh, managing it according to their laws and customs and their contemporary realities and the future for climate change we have, you can see the, 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 the amount of um, um, IPAs there are across Australia. You can see how much there isn't in Victoria. Well, even these have got a heap. Uh, we do have IPAs down in the southwest. Um, just to note up in Hay, and I know in the paper we talk about the case study for Ned's Corner, we've got this amazing story of Trust for Nature, who for a long time I wouldn't trust, but they're getting ready to hand back 30,000 hectares of country to the mob up there, ready to share that story about how to look after it and how to restore it. Um, it's, it's amazing. So well done for Trust for Nature. And it serves for a model for all of, all of us not to get over our own prejudices, but to focus on country, what needs to be done. 85 million hectares. And in Victoria, we have 3,600 covered. 2,600 are from my community on Gunditj Mara. Well, it's all Gunditj Mara country, really. Um, us mob and the Fram mob. We're all family. But we need to spread that out. Um, to me, it's a tool, it's a challenge. People freak out, oh, you know, national parks, giving them back to the blackfellas. Yeah, well, it's already happening. Uh, Aboriginal title under the Traditional Owner Settlement Act, that's there. But there's always room for innovation and for the self-determination of um, not only us as traditional owners, but for country. Um, I know this talk's been a lot about um, the political science that goes into it and the reality on the ground to what's happening. Uh, I wanted to end on, uh, back in 2008, for people who know Jeff Carr, he's a botanist, 
um, we had the fortunate, um, uh, we had the, it was great fortune for Jeff to come down on our country along the Budgebeam uh, landscape, which is the stony woodlands. Um, that's the world's oldest and most extensive aquaculture system in the world. Uh, we worked with Jeff. We work out. We did about a survey, a botanical survey of about 90 quadrants up and down the landscape. Um, that was in 2008. We published all that. Uh, we, in this year, we have now have the great fortune again. Jeff's still around. He's back down on country, going to uh, uh, to check those um, those 90 quadrants out. Um, I seen him last week. I said, "Oh, how's it going? You know, we're indigenous protected area. This and that." Um, he goes, "It looks very dire, Damien." I said, what? I said, what are you doing, Jeff? He said, even though we recorded those quadrants coming out of the millennial drought, millennial drought last, uh, in 2008, even though we've restored Lake Conda, even though we have that landscape protected by the highest protection in the world with the UNESCO World Heritage, even though uh, we've, we've, we've tr uh, treated the koalas um, to reduce them from uh, 13,000 down to about 9,000 now, um, it still looks dire. We had bushfires through there. We've had that opportunity for, oh, the bushfires we had in uh, Black Summer. Um, while the west of Australia burned, it was like our ancestors were doing a cultural burn. We were sitting there at the mission watching it and it was low, didn't get in the canopies and we were sitting there, oh, you know, what if ancestors moved the fire over there a bit and Amazing. It reveals so much more to us about our country. Um, yes, even though we have everything that you can imagine what country needs from a human perspective in regards to protection, us as Gunditjmara people, as traditional owners, it's still looking dire. It's unreal. It's scary. And we really need to, um, um, to uh, uh, enlist what we have for the Royal Society of Victoria to battle the big problem with little approaches, but smart approaches. <laughs>